I'm Doug, owner of Prestige Motorsports, and today I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about 8-stack fuel injection as well as 8-stack carburation such as Weber's. We just so happen to have a bunch of them here in front of us. These are all for customers' projects that are in process right now. As many know, we do a ton of these. So what we want to do is just dig into some of the features that uh, the Inglees and the Borla systems have, and then the things that we do to ensure that they're set up correctly and that they just run phenomenally when you get your engine package. All right, so we'll start with this one that I've got upside down here. And the reason that it's upside down is these, even though there's an individual runner per cylinder, there's what they call a common plenum. It's very, very important that this plenum is, is available on the system that you're looking at. Borla, hands down, is going to always have it. Um, the reason for this especially with fuel injection, we need a common area where we're going to take manifold vacuum from so we can tune the EFI system. Uh, but one of the things we do when these come in, it's very important to take this plate off. Sometimes there's uh, you know, some metal shavings that get left behind, so a good engine builder is going to take that off, make sure all of this is clean before uh, final assembly. Now, these others... Uh, that are flipped up right here. None of these happen to be polished, uh, but the one thing that sets Borla apart from some of the others in the industry is their polishing. Uh, it's just, it is absolutely second to none. The reason most people buy this is it's jewelry for the top of the motor. There's no doubt that they run a little bit harder, make a little bit more power, but it's really about a style more than anything. So uh, the polishing stands out, their machining techniques stand out, and the linkage and how they adjust. Uh, you have companions, uh, so two carburetors or two throttle bodies are a companion. One is a driver, one is a slave, and there's individual adjustment between these throttles. So generally you have to remove these throttle bodies in order to install them, the manifold, on the engine. Number one, we get a good line of sight of port alignment, which is very important to how well the engine runs. But then when we reinstall the throttles, we have to readjust them. So we do a, a basic bench setting. When we go to the dyno, not only are we dynoing it with this system and the fuel injection system, but after all of our preliminary heat cycles, first couple pulls, once that's completed, we go back and reset these throttles. It's very, very important because heat and expansion changes uh, the, the base settings dramatically. One thing to point out too, if you're getting an engine from us with one of these systems, a lot of any of the little small issues have been worked out. But if, if the installer wants to raise the idle, it's very important whatever you do to one side of the adjustment also is done on the other side. Uh, that is a key point because if we only adjust one bank of throttles, it's going to throw this bank completely off. So moving on from the Borla stuff, which is obviously fuel injected. Forgot to mention we use Holly EFI primarily with these. But get over here to this GT40 piece. Um, looks a little different and the casting's a little different. This is a carbureted setup. So this would be referred to as your Weber type system. This is from Jim Inglis. Very, very nice, well-developed piece. Um, one of the things I'll, I'll point out about this one is that if you look underneath here, there's no common plenum. So this is going to be quite a bit harder to tune because they don't share any kind of vacuum signal at all. Uh, from years and years of experience of tuning these, if it had a common plenum, makes our lives much, much easier. Uh, but no doubt we'll be able to get this tuned up for the customer, make sure he's uh, you know, happy and all. Uh, with our experience of tuning carburetors, it won't be an issue. One of the things with these systems you want to make sure of is uh, fuel pressure cannot be over two to three pounds. That's, that's very, very important. Um, and just wanted to point out that it, it does not have a plenum. The water outlets, there's gonna have to be a common manifold to go back to the radiator, where these newer systems use a thermostat, thermostat housing, pretty common to what you see today. Um, the last one over here is gonna be from uh, Hillborn. And so this is for a Hemi that we're doing. We're doing a 426 Hemi. You'll notice it's got a really tall stack. Um, what's neat about all these systems is the stack height changes 
where the power happens in the RPM range. So we have the ability, if we go back here and look at the Borla, this is a 35 millimeter stack. I believe this one is as well. Then we've got uh, a 50 millimeter. They do them in a 75, 100, and actually I think even 150 millimeter now. And of course you, you get to this one, this Hillborn, very, very tall. What we're gonna do in this testing, and this is what why we always test, is just nonstop every day, is we're gonna, he only has so much hood height. So we're gonna start chopping it an inch at a time until we get to the, where he wanted to be uh, height wise. What we're gonna find is we're gonna make the most torque with the tallest stack, and we're gonna end up increasing peak power as we shorten this thing. Uh, it'll be really interesting, something that you can uh, look forward and stay tuned for. Um, but nonetheless, if you're price shopping, spend the money for the quality the first time around. By the time you buy one of the cheaper systems, they don't look as good. The machining is not nearly the same. By the time you make it right for the customer, if you're billing for your time, you'll have been able to buy a nice piece day one. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.